It's your boy. I'm that. I'm that. I'm that guy. Jasper Two Fly, and I'm back with another video. And I don't need to do any talking. You guys see where we're at right now. We're about to react to this Lakers Heat game. I'm about to analyze this whole entire game. I'm very upset as a Laker fan. I'm very sick to my stomach as a Laker fan. We need to talk about everything that went on during this game. If you guys want to skip to the last play, I'll leave the timestamp in the description because I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. I have a hot take on the last play. I'm a little upset. Let's just get right into it. I want to talk about, I want to break down all the big details about last night's game. So that's what I'm about to do right now. No more talking. Let's just get to it. All right, y'all. I want to talk to y'all about this play right here. Now, I don't think I'm going to edit this video too much, but I want to talk about this play right here. Look, one thing that I noticed about the Lakers during this game that really irked my nerves is the fact that they did not want to switch screens. Whether it was on-ball screens or off-ball screens, they didn't want to switch at all, guys. It was like they didn't want to create mismatches, even though the Heat don't have superstars like that. So there is no real mismatch on the court. Just take a look at this play, and I'll examine what the Lakers should have done. Look at this. You guys see how Tyler Harrell comes off that screen, but Caruso's trailing? Kuzma needs to step up there, and Caruso needs to switch on to Jimmy Butler. It's that simple. Hold on. Let me rewind this real quick for you guys to understand. You see that? He's a little late. You see he's a little late. So right there is where... Kuzma needs to step up on that screen and switch on the hero and Caruso switch on the Jimmy Butler, right? They don't do it. Look how late, look how late Caruso is. And Kuzma sees all this. If I'm Kuzma, I'm getting right up on hero and having Caruso stay. If Jimmy slips, you got backside help with Markeith Morris. You're going to have backside help. But Kuzma has to, he's got to switch that hard. But rather than switching, you give up a wide open Tyler Hero three-pointer. Guys, he's hitting that shot six times out of ten at least. Those are wide open practice three-pointers. That happened a lot in the game with him or Duncan Robinson or Jimmy Butler or Kendrick Nunn. They were getting wide open looks off screens. Because there wasn't hard enough switching. Switch on to the guy hard so he doesn't get a wide open look. There's no mismatches in this game. There's no mismatches with this series when it comes to us, the Lakers, because I'm a Laker fan. When it comes to the Lakers guarding the Heat, they don't have anybody. They don't have dominant bigs. They don't have dominant wings. They don't have dominant guards. Jimmy Butler is very good. But whether it's Kuzma guarding him or Caruso guarding him, they both aren't going to do that great of a job guarding him. He's a great player. So what does it matter? Switch hard off that so you don't give up a wide open look. You don't have to necessarily stay so attached to your man. Switch on that. You're going to have backside help from Morris. You're going to have backside help from a big. You're going to have backside help from LeBron. You're going to have backside help from AD. Switch on that. Don't give up wide open shots. We did that a lot. They got a lot of good looks because we just refuse to switch. All right, I want to talk about this right here. Now, if you guys were watching the game last night, I hope everybody I hope everybody here was watching the game. If you guys watched the game last night, you guys will notice a common theme with what was going on throughout the game. LeBron literally kept us in the basketball game the first half. He literally was carrying us the first half. He hit so many big shots throughout this game that just kept us in the game. Right here, we're down by 11, 7 6 to play. And Jimmy Butler just got a strong and one. We look shook. We look like, okay, that he could break away with this game. They could, they could break this game open. Watch this play right here. Green, tough pass gets to Caruso. James 
James tries a three pointer. LeBron James just a bucket. Just a bucket. Just keeping us in the game. Just keeping us afloat. So that we don't go. If he misses that, the Heat go down and hit a three. Now we down 14. But instead, he hits that three. Now we down eight. Now we got some momentum. You guys see what I'm saying? He kept us single handedly, literally kept us in the game. I think he hits another three after this, too. Let me see. Yeah, I think this is it. Guys, that's a big shot right there. That's a huge shot. Now we got some momentum. Now LeBron hit back-to-back -back threes. Now we got momentum. Now we down six. Those are huge plays right there, guys. Huge plays. It literally kept us in the game. All right, guys. So here's the injury that I want to talk to you guys about. It's the Anthony Davis injury, guys. Let's just get right into it. Let me see. Guys. Guys, let me just tell you this, guys. Listen. Never will I say he just flat out like he's in no pain. I'm not going to say he's in no pain. But, guys, let's be a little honest, guys. Let's be honest with ourselves. Lakers fans, you guys can be honest here. He does this a lot. He does this in a lot of games where he just, I don't know, he falls to the ground or something. He gets injured. He'll be right back in the game maybe a minute later, or he'll just stay in the game. And it'll look like it's a really severe injury because he'll be grimacing on the floor and It'll look so it'll look like a career ending injury by the way he pulled by the way he looks. It'll look career ending. But best believe Anthony Davis will be back in that game two minutes later. And that's exactly what happened in this game, bro. He was right back in the game. But look at the way he's looking right now, guys. Guys, he looks like this is a career ending injury. This looked like, okay, maybe he got a a, a torn Achilles or something like that, or a high ankle sprain. It looks something severe. Guys, he went right back in the game. I'm not going to go as far as to say he's just faking an injury because I don't think he's faking it. I think he's actually hurt. But it's exaggerated pain by just a little bit. Come on, guys. Just a little bit here, guys. Come on now. That pain is exaggerated by a little bit. He's hurt. But this ain't career-ending injuries. He should not be grimacing like that, and then he's all fine and good and dunking on people the next play. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it, guys. Guys, I want to talk about something here that we see on this play, but we see all throughout the end of the game, guys. Regular season, it's fine with me. Playoffs, it's fine with me on some games, on some nights. Game five of the NBA Finals to close the deal. This is unacceptable. LeBron needs to be guarding Jimmy Butler here. I don't care what anybody says. He needs to be guarding Jimmy Butler. There is no preserving energy. Why is he on Jay Crowder? I don't, I don't even want AD on Jimmy Butler. I want LeBron, the best player in the league, to guard Jimmy Butler. Watch Jimmy Butler here. Just gives AD a bucket. LeBron needs to guard him, just like he guarded Kawhi and Paul George those last plays of that Clippers game. Y'all remember that. I think I'll put the video right here. You see the clock. LeBron on Kawhi. Down to four. Here's George. He's way outside. A lunging three. No. He needs to be guarding Jimmy Butler in this scenario. This is the finals, baby. This is not regular season. Here we go again. Why do we have Marquise Morris on Jimmy Butler with the with the series on the line? Game five on the line. We have Marquise Morris on Jimmy Butler. Why not LeBron? Why is he checking Jay Crowder? Like Jay Crowder is just a one-on-one -on -one threat. Like Jay Crowder is Kevin Durant. Why don't we have LeBron on Jimmy Butler? Why isn't LeBron saying, okay, let me forget everything. I'm guarding, I'm guarding Jimmy Butler. He did it the last play where Jimmy Butler got fouled, which I will show. Let me see. Here we go. Now he guards him. But it was kind of like a, I don't know. He kind of like overplayed on that Jay Crowder screen thing. He was going to the right side. He went left. 
He got to the basket. The point is, LeBron should have been guarding Jimmy Butler the whole way through in the fourth quarter. But he wasn't. And Jimmy was getting money. It was like we couldn't guard Jimmy in crunch time. That's unacceptable. It's okay you do that regular season. I'm even okay if you do that some of the playoffs. But not game five in a closeout game to win a championship of the NBA Finals. No, that's unacceptable. LeBron, you need to be guarding Jimmy Butler from now on. All right, guys, this is what y'all been waiting for, man. This is what you guys have been waiting for. The final play. Let me see my notes here. Yep, we're on the, we're on the final play. This is what I've been waiting for, the final play. I'm going to evaluate every aspect of this play. Now, what I want you guys to see at the beginning of this play is just watch the, watch the very beginning before, before I move on to him starting to dribble, before I move on to anything. Watch the beginning of this final play. Watch. Guys, LeBron traveled. Or did you got did you guys not see that? Let me slow mo this for you because I don't think you guys paid attention to that really. Let me slow mo it for you. Guys, he traveled. He traveled there, guys. You guys saw that. Even if you're a LeBron fan, you guys know he traveled there. So we got away with that. But let's continue with this play. Because there is a lot more to this play that needs to be evaluated that just went through everybody's heads. It's going through you guys' heads. Maybe it's because a lot of you guys have never played basketball. Or maybe it's because a lot of you guys have never been a star player on your team. I'm, I'm not sure. But... I want to let's evaluate some. Okay, so Danny Green supposedly sets a like a little slip screen. I want to talk to you guys about this right here. Guys, a lot of you guys are talking about LeBron was triple teamed. He made the right play. Guys, look at the play. He drove and he dribbled into the triple team. You guys got to see what I'm talking about. Let's rewind this. Guys. He's dribbling into the triple. He dribbled into the triple team, literally. He didn't have to go that way. He could have went the other way. Or he could have ISOed right at the top of the key. You guys, I pause it right here. All that open space in the middle of the floor, he could have ISOed there. He didn't have to have Danny Green come up and set a fake screen and he not use the screen. He didn't have to do that. Take Jimmy Butler to the top of the key and cook him. Go one-on-one. -on -one. No, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to drive to the right side, drive right into the middle of the paint where he's triple teamed, and kick it out to Danny Green. Now, what I'm going to say right now is, why didn't he want to ISO at the top of the key? I'm not sure. He's had game winners where he's ISOed at the top of the key. I will show it right here. Five left. James for the jumper for the win. Bam! Green guarding clock at four. James steps into a jumper. And rattles it in. Three seconds left. Cleveland triggers in. James, two seconds. One second for the win. Oh! So why didn't he got why didn't he just do that, guys? Why not? And also what I will say is this: a lot of you guys, first of all, you guys are wrong about LeBron not taking the final shot. He has to take the final shot there. He's got to take the final shot, like I just like I just said, at the top of the key going one-on-one -on -one with Jimmy Butler. He has to take the final shot. But what you guys fail to understand is, guys, the drive to the basket that he had, that wouldn't have been a bad shot. That's a floater. That's a jump hook. It's kind of a tough shot, but it's a makeable shot. Let me rewind it for you guys real quick. Let me pause it in frames. Let me... Okay, we got that. Okay. But watch, watch the next frame real quick. Watch this. Guys, he's barely by Duncan Robinson. Bam Adebayo isn't close enough to him. Jay Crowder isn't necessarily there. Jimmy's behind the play, guys. That's a floater. That's a one-legged floater. That's a one-legged jump hook. That's a bucket, guys. He's got to take that shot. 
If he's not going to ISO at the top of the key, he's got to take that shot. What aren't you guys understanding about that? A lot of you guys are saying, well, he was triple team. There was guys around him. You know, Bam had that block against Jason Tatum in the playoffs. Guys, LeBron is not Jason Tatum. He's got to take that shot there. He's made a floater for a game winner like that. You guys saw it. Seconds going to work. LeBron James hooks. Got it. He did it. What? Drives, continues off. Balance banks at home. He is He's hit shots like that before. He's got to take that shot, guys. He's pausing frame by frame. That's a wide open look. That's a wide open look. We're paying you too much money. The Lakers are paying him too much money. Listen, I'm not a believer in just flat out just saying, bro, you shouldn't have a job. I'm not a believer in saying that. Because I believe maybe he should have a job, you know? But listen, I'm sorry, guys. A lot of you guys out there are like, Danny Green should not be, be getting paid. He should be getting paid. But not 15 million paid. Stop it, guys. There's too many people that's homeless out there. There's too many people that are going days without eating food. There's way too many people that's homeless out there for Danny Green to be getting paid $15 million to miss open jumpers. Way too many people. Do you know what you could do? Bro, pay Danny Green 500 k That means there's $14.5 million for people who need it, guys. He's getting paid $15 million. These are open looks. This is your job. Danny Green isn't getting paid on the Lakers to dunk on people, to cross people over, to throw dimes. He's getting paid on our team to hit open jumpers and play some defense. But I'm not going to put the full blame on Danny Green because people miss shots, okay? It's a high leverage moment. People miss shots. So the full blame isn't on Danny Green by any means whatsoever. I'm not trying to say that. But come on, bro. Come on, man. Let's continue with this play because we know he misses. First of all, guys, let's 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 give a let's give a round of applause to Markeith Morris. He had a good hustle play, guys. He hustled for that rebound. If you guys watched the whole entire play, let's rewind that play a little bit. Just rewind it a little bit. Guys, when Danny Green has the ball here, Markeith Morris is on the other side of the court. He goes in. And he gets the rebound. That's a good job. That's a good also play. That's good. Nice, Markeith Morris. But here is the problem with Markeith Morris's play. Markeith Morris has the ball. He's got full possession of the ball here. Six seconds left in the game. He holds the ball for way too long, guys. He holds it for way too long thinking of a decision to make. Markeith Morris, I would have been better off you taking a jumper right here. That would have been better off than what you did. I would have even been okay if you passed it right back to Danny Green. Because Danny Green, look at Eagle Dollar. He's not even in the picture, guys. Danny Green has another open jumper. Or I would have been even better if you passed it to Caldwell Pope, who has an open jumper. But look at LeBron on the other side of the court. That was the number one decision you should have made. LeBron was open on the other side of the court. Guys, that is one of the biggest mistakes in NBA history right there. Because I'm not going to lie. Markeith Morris kind of had an okay idea by trying to dump it into Anthony. He, it was okay. It was not a terrible idea, guys. But it was a terrible pass, guys. You got to bounce past that into AD. But he tried to throw a, a lazy lob. I don't know what that... Guys, that pass is nowhere... That pass ain't close to AD. It's not. I wish I could get another angle of the pass from the... I wish I could. That pass is not a good pass, guys. That pass is going towards the other side of the basket. That's not a good pass, guys. But another problem with that play, too, I'm not going to blame Markeith Morris for the whole entire 
game or for that whole entire play. I'm not going to blame him. Look at Anthony Davis, guys. Look at Anthony Davis. I want you guys to pay close attention to AD. Pay close attention. Guys, he got pushed out the paint by Bam Adebayo. He got bullied in the paint. Let me show you why, guys, because you guys are that, that's going over you guys' head. Look at Anthony Davis. He's in a good position to seal him, get the ball right next to the basket, and dunk it. He's in a great position. Look what he does, though. Look how look how Bam out of look how Bam out of bio bullies him. Look. Now look at AD on the other side of the key. He got bullied out of the basket. You got to be stronger than that, bro. You got to be stronger than that. You got to be stronger than that, bro. That's my take on it, man. That's my take on it, guys. Danny Green, you got to hit that open shot. LeBron, you should have never passed it anyways. But I guess everybody's saying, okay, it's okay for LeBron to pass that. Great players take that shot. And we've seen you make that shot before. Markeith Morris, good hustle on the rebound, but that was one of the biggest mistakes in NBA history by far. That was. And Anthony Davis, you got to be stronger than that, bro. You got to push out the paint, bro. You got to seal him. You got to play stronger. No, that, that went over everybody's head. But real basketball fans know everything that I'm saying to be dang near accurate. Real basketball fans know. Guys, I'm disappointed. Game six, we'll get it together. Game six, we'll get it together. We will. I think we'll win game six. As a Laker fan, I think we'll win game six. But we, we really should have had this one, guys. That's my take on it. I'm out, y'all. I'm out, y'all. I'm out. I just want one kiss. I just want one kiss. I just want one kiss to make my night. I just want one kiss. Hey, babe, you know I want the.